And this week marks the 25th anniversary of the Great Macon Flood. 41 NBC's Dalton Mullinex takes a look back at the storm that produced the flooding and shows you the lasting impacts it left on middle Georgia. On the final day of June in 1994, a tropical depression formed in the Caribbean Sea and quickly strengthened into Tropical Storm Alberto. A few days later, Alberto made landfall near Destin, Florida. The coastal impacts were minimal, but the torrential rains were felt in parts of Georgia and Alabama. The remnants of Alberto moved from the Gulf Coast up through southeast Alabama and into the metro Atlanta area before stalling out and then tracking back over the already soaked communities. The slow moving storm dropped over a foot of rain in parts of middle Georgia. This amount of rain falling in such a short time frame allowed for flood levels that had never been seen before. In 1950, this five and a half mile long Macon levee was constructed. It protects portions of downtown Macon like Central City Park from the Okmulgee River. In 1994 though, that river crested at over 35 feet, actually spilled over into the downtown area. The Army Corps of Engineers helps oversee the Macon levee, and I had the opportunity to talk over the phone with three members of the Savannah District, Macon's designated district. Lucia Newberry, a levee safety program manager, says the grass of the earthen levee will only hold for so long during historic rainfall events. If Alberto happened again, Newberry says a similar result could unfold. If that type of storm happened again, it's anticipated to be to be overtopped because the levee is just not built that high. Once it's overtopped, it'll start to erode, and, um, and that's what caused the levee to actually breach. When the levee failed in 1994, the Macon Water Authority was impacted. William Brown, a Macon Water Authority employee during the flood, remembers the role he played in trying to keep clean water pumping to middle Georgia residents. When floodwaters overtook the Riverside facility, Brown and his co-workers had to retreat to higher ground. When Brown went back to the treatment facility after the water had receded, what he saw was astonishing. We went down and checked it out. It left a watermark. 15 feet on the wall. Gary McCoy, the current director of water operations for the Macon Water Authority, echoed the same sentiments as Brown. We never imagined that the water level would get so high that it would flood the whole entire uh, building and, may, and we was out of water for 19 days. Employees worked tirelessly trying to restore clean water to their customers. After the flood, the Macon Water Authority knew it was time to build a new water treatment plant so that this event would never play out again. In July of 2000, the Amerson Water Treatment Plant was opened and ever since has provided Macon Water Authority customers with clean water. Although the facility is 19 years old, McCoy still has glowing remarks about it. It's still a state-of-the-art plant and we're still producing a great product, uh, quality of water. Reporting from Macon, Dalton Mullinax, 41 NBC News. The Macon levee is inspected every two years and the next inspection will actually be conducted this month.